Um, I wanted to talk to you about captions. I'm Gary Katzman. I work at Brightcove, and I'm also currently the maintainer of VideoJS. I've been doing captions on and off for about five years now. Uh, so to start us off, what are captions? Captions represent the spoken word in uh, video files. Uh, in the US particularly, there's a distinction between captions and subtitles. Subtitles tend to be just a spoken word, whereas captions also include um, other audio, audio cues, uh, like what music's playing or anything else to help uh, the people with um, hearing disabilities. However, in addition to helping people with disabilities, it actually helps everyone because you can better understand what is saying if there's if the audio is mixed badly or really it's just nice. Uh, so the very first caption was in 1971 on Julia Child's program, The French Chef, and this was uh, what is called open captions. Open captions, as the name open implies, are always visible. They're also called burnt in or hard coded captions. And so a lot of people don't actually like that because it can obscure the video. So instead, we transition to closed captions, which are hidden by default, and they require user interaction to be turned on. Uh, so since closed caption was introduced, there's been a lot of work, um, especially since the first caption. And in 1976, the FCC reserved line 21 of the North American broadcast signal for the 608 caption standard. Um, and after that, and throughout the entire time, there's lots more work is happening in closed caption. And in 1980, the very first closed caption TV shows were broadcast across the US. Following that, in 1990, the US passed the Americans with Disabilities Act. The particular thing that matters here is Title III, which prohibits discrimination based on disability. And this meant that all federal programs had to have captions available with, uh, with audio. And then also a lot of other programs started adding captions to comply with Title III of the ADA. Um, following that, in 2002, uh, the W3C was looking at the landscape of closed caption, and they noticed that there's a whole bunch of different formats. And they decided, well, Let's take all the different formats that, and all the different features that people have taken and built this one standard called TTML to have uh, one interoperable file that everyone can use. Um, following that, in 2010, the FCC passed the uh, CVAA, and it stated that any content that was put up online that was broadcast on TV with captioning had to have captions as well. And this is uh, where most people come in to this is to follow the law. Um, and, and following that, uh, the Wattwug um, started looking at a format. They decided not to go with TTML because it's XML based. And so they looked at SRT. And then it moved to the W3C the following year as WebVDT which is basically what it is now. Um, we're here at Demuxed. Um, so TTML stands for the Time Text Markup Language. It is an authoring and distribution format. Uh, that means that you can both have your captions in the TTML file and then send it over to the um, browser to be displayed or send it to a TV to be displayed. Also, you can use TTML to have your captions in this format and then transform it to some other format, um, legacy or otherwise. Uh, it is based on XML and some other stuff. Um, and this is both a nice thing and a bad thing for TTML. Uh, XML is really flexible, but at the same time, it's also very strict. So you have the benefits where if uh, you are guaranteed to have a nice uh, formatted file because of that, but XML makes it quite tricky to work with. Um, also, the CSS is a bit weird. 
Um, so uh, TTML was originally called uh, the Distribution Format Exchange Profile, which I think is pretty fitting because one of the biggest ideas, I think, in TTML are the concept of profiles. So TTML defines a lot of various features that are available, for example, background color and foreground color of the captions or where the captions go. And the profile tell you which things should be available for you. So there's like a presentation profile which says, oh, we need these features to be able to present it. There's also a transformation profile, which is uh, we need these features to be able to take this caption and transform it to some other format. Uh, since CTML was created, it's been extended um, by SMPT and EBU, which is the European Broadcasters Union. Um, EBUTT is their new like standard for everything. Um, and then IMSC is a pretty new one that I think is really interesting because it looks to take all the features that are available in TTML and get rid of everything that doesn't really make sense purely for displaying captions. Um, WebVDT, in contrast, is uh, the web video text tracks, and they're significantly simpler. Um, they're text-based, and it's pretty much just a timestamp and the text, uh, there's not much going on. It's based on the old subrip SRT format, if people are familiar. Uh, so this is uh, a TTML file. Hopefully you can all see. Um, it's pretty standard um, XML. There's a head and a body. Um, things that go on the head are stuff like styles and regions, and the body has the cues. Uh, this is more or less the equivalent of WebVTT. Um, uh, so this has embedded styles in it, which is actually a fairly new addition to the spec. Uh, most people currently uh, style it separately in the HTML document. Um, so this is a specific comparison between the two, uh, two specific queues. Uh, in TTML, it's a paragraph, where it's a P tag. Uh, the two interesting things to note is the, in TTML, you have the begin and end. Uh, you can also have a begin and a duration for how long should this caption be shown. Um, whereas in WebVTT, you have just the, um, you have just this timestamp um, with hours being optional. But it's basically minutes, seconds, and fractional seconds, an arrow, and the ending timestamp, um, and then the, the queue text. And this is the, in WebVTT, it's the only time format, whereas in TTML, you actually have nine other ways of specifying time. Uh, thankfully, IMSC gets rid of that, and I think basically specifies one or two ways. Um, so uh, styling, uh, TTML is very specific on what is what styling are allowed. Um, and WebVTT is also, but they uh, are basically, in WebVTT, they're basically CSS extensions, which could be a bit troublesome for uh, people trying to render WebVTT that are not browsers. The, I think the interesting thing about TTML is that uh, the style attributes act a bit like uh, classes, um, but a style a uh, style tag can reference other style tags, and it'll actually chain all the CSS attributes, or the style attributes between them. So if one style element refers to another, it'll, it'll uh, reference all of them. Um, so originally, I had these regions. I just yesterday found out that WebVTT regions are not the same as TTML regions. TTML regions are uh, generic places to put text on the screen and in fact, off screen as well. Whereas WebVTT regions are specifically designed for roll up captions uh, for the smooth scrolling. Uh, so browser support, WebVTT basically is available on browsers across the board. Um, iOS and Safari currently have the best support for most of the things, but most browsers have at least rudimentary support. Uh, TTML has some support for Microsoft, 
And uh, in the form of IMSC, uh, iOS 11 actually has full support for it, which is pretty cool. Um, so ultimately, because of how simple WebVDT is and how it's very readable and the browser support, I think that WebVDT is better. But at least for the web. Um, so ultimately, I think we should try and use WebVT on the web and then have TTML or IMC for everything else. But really, any, having captions at all is better than not having captions. And so we should work to have captions everywhere and improve the caption formats that we do have. Um, thank you very much.